Hello friends, today I'm making a mushroomy cottagecore fawn doll. This was actually supposed to be a really simple doll to kind of show off some products that Magic Fly very kindly sent me, but the idea kind of got away from me. Um, I blame Delightful for inceptioning digital grade legs into my brain, but she turned out incredible. I'm so proud of her. If you like the video or the doll, please give me a like. I super appreciate that. If you want to see more, then subscribe. I'd love to have you here. And that gives me a boost both in mood and in the algorithm. And keep watching for info about a giveaway. I have this doll with molded on leggings. I thought she was the perfect candidate for fawn legs. So I'm prepping her as usual. I shave her head with my clippers. And then I soften the vinyl of her head with a hairdryer and take off her head. I did a little video showing how I get the heads off. I know I had issues when I first started out and I've gained a lot of confidence. So I hope that little bit will help. This doll has quite a lot of glue in her head, so I'm warming that to try and get it out more easily. I'm just using my hairdryer to do this. There was a lot of glue in here and it was that gross kind that is like super sticky, not a fan. I use a screwdriver to scrape the inside of the head to dislodge all the glue plugs and then I use a pair of tweezers to pull the glue and the hair from inside the head. And then I took her face paint off with acetone. I want her horns to be pretty big and curling backwards, uh, kind of like a goat. I've seen lots of um, fawns curling forward, um, but I think this look is super, super cute, so I wanted to try it. I know that she's gonna have quite a bit of hair, so I wanna make these pretty big. I keep making features too small and then they kind of get lost in the rest of the doll design. So I decided to use Fimo. I have quite a lot of confidence in Fimo. I made this core with just um, aluminum foil and then um, rolled a sheet of Fimo, kind of thin, um, added a bit of liquid clay, covered that um, foil core, um, and then tried to smooth the clay over a bit. It doesn't need to be perfect, um, just covered really. It took me quite a lot of force to bend these ones. I don't know if it's just because I'm a weakling or <laughs> if they're a bit, uh, a bit tough. And then once that foil was covered, I checked for size. When I'm adding bits of clay here, I'm using baby oil to blend them. I, I find using a little bit of baby oil on my finger really helpful to try and get a smooth, seamless blend. It's not completely seamless, but better than if I didn't use it. And then used a, a piece of foil to give those a bit of texture and then baked that at this stage. I filmed this pretty poorly, I'm really sorry. So how I added the, that ridge texture is that I um, put a little bit of uh, liquid Sculpey on the baked clay and then I added um, just a really thin snake of clay um, and then blended one edge, just the edge um, further away from the tip of the horn. And I did that um, all the way down to the, the base of the horn. When they were in the oven, some of the ridges got squished a bit, so I'm just using my nail drill and a really small bit to then bring back the um, detail there. I remember now that I wanted to give her um, different ears. I did think about um, borrowing some ears from Creator Monster, but I decided that I wanted bigger ears to make sure that they showed um, behind the hair again. Um, so yeah, just chopped her ears off. None of this needs to be perfect. Um, it, the, the texture is going to make it look more organic anyway so you can kind of um, do a bit of a botch job on these. I trimmed away part of the horn to allow me to get the angle that I wanted against the head. Um, totally cool to cut through foil actually, it will sharpen your blade. The same for scissors actually, it's a good way to sharpen scissors. If these horns are going to have any chance of staying, they need um, a wire to hold them in. The physics doesn't work basically if you don't have that wire through the horn and through the head. So I drilled a hole, added the wires and then pushed the um, horns onto those. I've trimmed the horns as well to make sure that I can get the angle that I want against the head. And then that gap, I'm using more um, aluminium foil and some hot glue to kind of bulk that out. It 
helps with weight and also um, epoxy is expensive you know I don't want to use um, more than I, I need to and then I'm using epoxy to create the transition between her head and the horns if you decide to use epoxy make sure to read the instructions you're supposed to wear gloves uh, to blend the two parts together which I do and then um, after that it, it's supposed to be safe to handle but people can have reactions so if you are um, prone to allergic reactions to products like this then I would recommend wearing gloves uh, to sculpt with. I'm using a wet finger to blend this clay. You don't need to be perfect again, um, rough will still look good. I marked around the horns so that I can take those off to reroute with a tip from uh, Doll Motion. I just used scrap clay to make these actually and then I decided to paint them so first I gave them a coat of a warm brown acrylic and then I um, used a cool brown on top of that. I think this is super cheap paint and I think it's got a retarder in so it wasn't drying very quickly and gave me quite a lot of working time. I decided to wipe off most of that paint and then um, that gave me quite a good texture and then I just dry brushed uh, more texture on so to dry brush you dip your brush in the paint and then wipe off most of the paint so there's only a smidge on the brush and it's essentially dry <laughs> dry brushing um, and then you drag that across the the texture of the horns and it just brings out um, kind of the the sculpted details there this works really really well on shoes as well to pick out details I'm giving her digital grade legs. I haven't done this since my alien video actually, and they were um, mobile joint, much like Delightful does. Um, I, I want to cover these in fur, so I didn't want to give them a mobile joint that's harder to cover. So I did what Esalan and Jackie O do and gave her a fixed joint here. So I just cut her legs, added wire, added more foil. I actually didn't like the way they looked at first. I thought they looked too long, so I decided to cut the shins down a little bit. And then once that joint was secure-ish, I covered that in epoxy. Um, again, this, this doesn't need to be perfect because we're going to be completely covering it anyway. I wanted to give her cloven feet as well. I didn't even think about cutting her feet off. I was w watching other people's fawn videos like halfway through doing this and a lot of people cut the toes off and I'm not really sure why because I don't want them to be shorter than where her toes are anyway. So to me, it, it just would like kind of take away from some of the structure of the doll's foot if I took them away. Anyway, I roughed them up um, to try and give the epoxy more of a chance of um, actually sticking to the plastic. I was looking at images of fawns and satyrs and they all have a little poochy tummy. So I wanted to make sure that her tummy was visible, but because of these sculpted leggings, I can't really have that poochy tummy visible now. So I just added some epoxy to give her the tummy rather than sanding that down because there's kind of a join line between the leggings and the rest of the body anyway, which would need filling. So just added that, smoothed that out as best I could. I'm gonna need to sand it anyway, so it's not a huge problem. And then I used some um, spray putty, it's the one I always use. Let that dry, sanded it back. Let, uh, like sprayed it again, added a bit of putty, sanded it back, I did the usual, the usual drill there. I think it took about three coats to get uh, a reasonable transition. I painted her tummy and her ears in as close a uh, match as I could manage. I, I don't know how great I am at skin tone matching, but I think this was um, pretty close. There's this TikTok sound that lives rent free in my brain. Um, I don't, you, I, you, I know it word for word, I'm pretty sure. Stop telling me my white freckles don't look realistic. I'm not trying to look realistic, Karen. I'm trying to look like a mushroom so I can attract myself a cute fairy girlfriend. It's so in my head and I needed to create a doll of it. I know that Charlotte's Repaints um, did a uh, doll of it. She does incredible TikTok, obsessed with her little videos. They're absolutely brilliant. Um, but yeah, I wanted to do my version. Um, I can't remember why 
I decided, but this this all kind of happened quite quickly in my brain. It's kind of an old TikTok as well, so I'm like way past the trend, but better late than never. I don't know. So she's going to be really mushroomy. She was going to start as a, a cottage called Mushroomy Girl, and then somehow she ended up a fawn, um, something that I am not mad at. So my mushroom fawn is trying to attract a fairy girlfriend, right? I thought she'd have um, mushrooms in her hair. I've seen that with some of the people that use the sound on the TikTok on the TikTok, <laughs> on the TikTok. So I made um, some mushrooms. I slid into of Crafts and Curios DMs to find out how they made their mushrooms because they're absolutely amazing. Check out their channel, super pretty repaints, gorgeous aesthetic. Um, and I also like kind of had a Google um, I because I know like certain things are said to attract fairies like bells. I would have loved to add some bells to this. I couldn't find any. I had a look what kind of flowers attract fairies and then tried to make them out of female. They're not perfect, they're just kind of like my rough artistic interpretation. I'm, I say I'm confident with female. I'm not great, but I like it. I used a toothpick to add white dots to the caps of the mushrooms. I'm using white acrylic paint here. And then I added some details to the Fimo flowers that I'd made as well. Same, again, white acrylic paint that I've watered down a bit. Mr. Super Customs was telling me about this different way to prepare hair and I want to show you because it's so fast and not bad on your hands and wrists. You take a foot of super chunky yarn, it needs to be super chunky for it to be super fast. Take apart the strands and then kind of like fray the edge a bit, like fluff the fibres apart and then just pull. That's it. That's it. Uh-huh. That's it. <laughs> like what? You get longer fiber doing this so you'll notice first some short fiber came out not a problem totally have uh, space for that in this doll and then you just get longer ones and you can do like a big old bunch of this together and it's just done in no time so once you've done that you can then iron it if you want to uh, i'm not going to today um, and you can brush it out if you want to but also not super necessary i found um yeah really impressed with this method mr super custom showed me hickey hickey ksu's instagram so check that out that's where this method perhaps came from and then i just reroute this in the way that i would normally reroute yarn you get a lot of length from this you can do this with like a double knit as well at the stage where you unwind it you just need to straighten those fibers to kind of make them come apart a bit more easily but yeah no brushing i'm impressed So I left those parts where the horns will be blank. So actually this is quite a quite a fast reroute because half of the head I'm not even rerouting. And I moved her parting as well to the centre, mostly because a lot of TikTok is um, Gen Z, right? And they're apparently obsessed with middle parts. So I thought she just had to have a, a middle part for my TikTok inspired doll, really. I'm obsessed with TikTok. I am on TikTok as well. I do post on TikTok and my TikToks get all of about 12 views. Uh-huh, I'm a big deal over there, guys. I'm using a super thin PVA glue to hold that hair inside the head. So Magic Fly, I was super excited when this brand got in contact with me because they are super affordable. And I think one of the biggest hurdles to the doll world is cost of products. So I thought if these products work, this is gonna be incredible. So 30 fabric paints, I think the set is 30 pounds, so like a quid per color, it's pretty flipping good. They're not all opaque, some are opaque, some are semi-translucent and some are translucent. All of the bottles rate their opacity rating and how UV fast they are. I found I got really good coverage while I was doing this. I want to make my cottagecore doll dress pattern available. I have the rest of the making of this dress is going to be over on my second channel where I'm going to put all my pans and stuff because I'm a bit worried that people don't want to get notifications for that kind of thing. So this is just going to be repaint and that channel is going to be lives and patterns. This stencil I, I made with my Cricut, you could totally cut it with a craft knife. This, this is just like a folder. 
so i'm using gold and white so the white wasn't totally opaque with the first pass but the second pass i think it was pretty good i decided to go over that with gold because i want to have like kind of layers of mushrooms i want this dress to be like abundantly mushroomy um, and then I'm using this pearlescent brown which has got kind of a purple undertone to add some dimensions I was a little bit impatient and didn't completely wait for these to dry but they still work well with it semi-dry and then so second round of mushrooms I did kind of um, like little tiny ones and then this is the um, the brown pearlescent one there's so many colors that like there's neon pearlescent metallic and then like um, creamy creamy just regular I tried them with a brush on live stream and they were kind of medium so I decided that I wanted to try a stencil and I think it was perfect for this application for like making a print on a dress and um, so I'm using the reds now for the caps of these mushrooms The, um, the texture of the fabric paint once it's dry is kind of um, not dissimilar to like an iron-on vinyl which I thought was super interesting it's very flexible no cracking whatsoever I then added some like deep pink pearlescent paint whoa deep pink pearlescent paint <laughs> to the mushroom caps to add a bit of dimension I would have added a red but actually I think the pink works better i didn't think it was finished enough so i decided to outline everything in black and the flow was really good they're super thick i added a bit of water flow was awesome still didn't think it looked finished enough so added these mushrooms in the background and a bit of shading i think it looks so cute and then used regular acrylic paint for those dots on the caps i am so happy with this piece i loved the paints i thought they were super good and they're really reasonable for what they are like i was trying to check because 30 quid is actually quite expensive um, within the Magic Fly range. Incredibly. They've got a great range. You've got to go check them out. Links in the description box. And with a discount code, yes, for a fabric paint, for the size of the bottles they give you as well. Very generous. Really good price. Super impressed. So impressed with this product. If you are interested in this dress, how to put it together, or if you want the pattern, pattern's always in my Etsy or free to my $5 and above tier Patreons. Support me on Patreon. And the videos on my second channel. Jackie O said it took four days to do her fawn leg fur project. The thought of that makes me want to cry, so I thought that I could cut some time out with the yarn prep face. I know that she wefted and I know that she brushes out. I'm not going to do either of those things. So what I did was use some hot glue and then kind of cut a flat edge on a bunch of the fibres of the yarn that I've pulled. And then like as I added them, I kind of trimmed them down with a combination of embroidery scissors and a razor i got into a pretty good rib rhythm with this like i was worried it was going to be mega tedious but it actually ended up being quite therapeutic i had mythos by stephen fry on in the background and um that it was quite a pleasurable experience actually i think it's quite fitting i was listening to greek mythology while making a a greek uh, creature i love mythology also if you have recommendations for audiobooks pop them in the down below i'm always looking for new audiobooks oh and i listened to howl's moving castle while i was doing this as well love that book just love it ate it i put a couple of links for those books in the down below as well anyway sorry back to the doll yeah i think in total it took me probably about eight hours across two sessions the gluing method i don't think it looks perfect but i think it is good enough if you know what i mean like i'm trying to get away from perfectionism a little bit i i really struggle with it and i think it's holding me back and i know that people don't notice the faults in my dolls as much as i do and if they do they don't tell me so what's the point of like striving for perfection all the time it's just driving me crazy and actually i think doing that kind of allowed me to enjoy the process of this doll a bit more and i did really enjoy making her and i made her pretty fast like even with all the mods and the fur i did her in four days which is super super fast for me at the moment so it doesn't look perfect and i am going to do some wefts to try and tidy up the edges 
while I was on the FEMO, I gave, I made her a, a little fawn tail as well, which I covered in fur. I'm just using that skewer there to make sure the hole that I drilled before stays uncovered with fur. It's around this time that I want it to look a lot tidier. So I made about 20 centimeters of wefts just with PVA glue. Um, and I'm using that kind of around the hairline. And then to make that look further natural, I used some just loose fibers and PVA glue to kind of make it look like it's growing from her body rather than wefts glued on. I made this V around her poochy tummy because th that's what I saw in art of fawns really, the, the little poochy tummy. Doesn't matter, she's going to be wearing a dress anyway, which I do realize is weird and I did go back and forth as to whether a fawn would wear undercrackers. I ended on no, but thinking about it, maybe yes, because I'm thinking Sylvanian families a little bit, and I think they had pants, didn't they? Somebody remind me, can't remember, it was a very long time ago that I had Sylvanian families. One of the things that I'm loving in cottagecore fashion is um, like corsets. So I decided to make her a tiny pair of stays and I didn't film this very well and I didn't get great footage at the end. I'm, I'm really sorry. I think I want to make more tiny stays and I will show you how I made them because I don't think it's something that you can necessarily pattern because there's so many variables in it. I really want some human stays as well. I've, it's a project. I'm going to do it. So Magic Fly sent me these watercolour pencils. I was really desperate to try these because they are £20 for 72 which is pretty mind-blowing. I think I've spent hundreds of pounds on watercolour pencils. I, I need them to be in rainbow-ish order just for my brain. I didn't do them super neatly but I know that it needs a colour chart because the outside of the pencils is not totally true to the the colour of the lead which is I mean this is good practice anyway because the outside colour on a pencil is always kind of like somebody's best colour match of the lead and the lead's not always going to look the same depending on like how you use the pencil and then also what you're doing it on so it is a good idea to always do a colour chart and I found this colour chart completely invaluable while I was doing the, the repaint. I, I filmed a little bit while, like of my first impressions after doing the colour chart so I'm going to send you over to uh, Lee that did the colour chart. Very pr pigmented, some of them are a little bit crumbly but the colours on the outside of the pencil and the names uh, sometimes make no sense whatsoever. For example, um, when I pull this pencil and looked at the name, um, okay. <laughs> the colour that came out was this and I guess like the centre of sunflowers are brown but that makes no sense to me. Um, and then so, some of the colours like Okay, sunflower is not a defined colour, right? So, okay, whatever, call it sunflower, fine. Like, some colour names have a meaning. For example, magenta, the outside of the pencil is probably purple, and it is definitely a blurple there, um, where magenta is kind of a super, super bright pink colour. And then talking of super, super bright pinks, because um, actually this colour I think would be really useful for a repaint, this one. So the name says hot pink, the pencil says purple, the swatch says this colour. Um, so actually I think it'd be really good in repaints, but you wouldn't guess that that's what you're getting. And even actually the lead colour, I don't think you'd guess that. So if you do get them, I definitely recommend uh, a colour chart. Like I think there's a lot more colours that are appropriate for kind of every skin tone than you would think just looking at them. But um, yeah, you've got to kind of ignore the ignore the names and ignore to an extent the colours on the outside of the pencil. So let's get it going on the jar. 
I lost the beginning of the face up. I'm really sorry. I'm having some issues with my camera. I just worked with the pencils in exactly the same way that I usually would, which I think is pretty impressive. I thought that I was going to have to find some workarounds. I did not. Like I said, I think people can be very elitist within the doll community when it comes to materials. So I decided that I wanted to keep this kind of a lower budget. Repaint, it's still obviously quite expensive stuff, but I decided to limit myself to only the Magic Fly pencils. And then I used my Mungo pastels in instead of the pan pastels that I usually use. I used a pencil eraser rather than my Tombow or a kneaded eraser because I feel like this is something that people have anyway. The brushes that I used were the ones that came with the pencils, which were actually Im impressive quality. I was, I was really surprised by that. I also used a couple of colours of mica powder but not perlet and then finally I did allow myself an Arteza white gouache and a super skinny tiny tiny brush. Some of the leads were a little bit crumbly but generally they held a point well and the set comes with a sharpener as well and it worked well on the pencils you know I've had issues with uh, sharpeners uh, recently. With the lighter colours I did use them wet when I was adding uh, highlights to the bottom of the irises. I found that they needed quite a lot more water to make them flow than I expected. I, I think genuinely if I was starting again with my knowledge but without my products, <laughs> that's a really weird concept. Anyway, I, I would go for the magic fly. I didn't find that I wanted anything more when I was doing the repaint. Like in my head I was thinking that it would probably be acceptable if I did the face up with mostly magic fly and then if I really struggled with say the black or the white which I know can be problem colours if I used uh, something from my stash like Caran Dash uh, my go to at the moment I didn't find that I wanted to at all like the, the colour payoff was fantastic I did the lashes in one layer the uh, this is really really impressed and I am so impressed that I want to give back like this was a huge step for me like having a company reach out to me and ask me to try their product basically living the dream i'm not gonna lie and that is because of my wonderful followers and subscribers i appreciate your support and then also if you weren't following me a company would never have reached out to me like this so to give back i really want to give away a set of these pencils that's how much i believe in them and i'm gonna buy some with my own money and send them to one lucky winner i'm gonna do the giveaway on instagram because it's so much easier to get in contact with someone via Instagram so pop over to my Insta if you want to join in with the giveaway. I really wanted to add the mica because um, some of the makeup looks that I was looking at on TikTok with this sound had kind of shimmery eyeshadow and I, I wanted to add that like th this doll the point is that she's trying to attract her girlfriend right she's she's got her game on she's looking her best. So I did that, but then I also added a little bit of mica um, to the bottom half of the irises, which I think um, looked really pretty. I did that before adding the highlight, um, and I think that gave it quite a lot of dimension. Honestly, like looking back at this face up, I'm not gonna lie, it feels like I didn't do this. It happens every time, like I get in the zone, something takes over, and then I come to and there's this beautiful doll. Like I genuinely, I feel like this doll just, appeared in my garden. I'm unbelievably proud of her. One of the reasons that I decided to add a gouache to this was because, well, I basically I love it. I, I find it so easy to work with on a repaint. What I say doesn't mean it will be the same for everybody else. I know that some people like doing the gradient in the irises with pastels. That doesn't work for me. I find it easier with pencils. What I say might not necessarily work for you. Please bear this in mind. Um, but I find I can get a really good thin line with a gouache so for things like um, eyebrow hair highlights, uh, lash highlights and catch lights I think it's um, a, a really useful product to have. I only use the white in this one um, and I think in my repaints uh, the white and the black are the ones that I use the most. I use Arteza. Both Magic Fly and Arteza have very affordable sets. Magic Fly is mega affordable right now. And then, then also, th this doll is inspired by a, a makeup look, right, with white freckles. And um, so, I really need that to be a feature. And I know that if you water down paint quite a lot and then splotch it on quite big, it makes those freckles that just have an eye outline. So, 
what you do wet your wet your paint quite a lot add that dot and then it let it just dry naturally and what happens is the pigment gathers to the edge of that shape and then leaves a, a very light wash in in the middle and i think it looks really beautiful so I, I did some like tiny little ones with a bit more pigment in and then these washier ones i also used kind of a wash of the um gouache on the lower edge of the irises this is a great way to um get a, a glowy highlight there because um the gouache is translucent right it lets some of the color from underneath show through and it looks like it's taking you ages to do whereas it's really not so top tip for that one <laughs> took me a long time to figure that one out by the way I decided to do tiny tiny catch lights and I think they look super effective so this is going to be something that I keep doing going forward. I'm so impressed with these products. I cannot tell you. I did not think this was going to be possible. This is... yeah. I don't know. I thought I wouldn't actually use these pencils again. Like in my head I didn't think they were going to be very good. They were incredible. I am so impressed by them. So impressed. <laughs> Throughout this video I didn't get fantastic footage of anything. Uh, really back to my old ways I guess I think I was so absorbed in the process and I really enjoyed the process like I've been struggling with dolls I think I've sp spoken about it before like I'm um, struggling to finish dolls struggling to start dolls but this project I just flew through and I enjoyed every part of it every every single aspect of it I really got into and um, yeah I just had a great time doing her so please forgive me for not having um, fantastic um, footage of, of some of the some of the component parts. I didn't film the stays mostly because I didn't think they were going to work but it's um, four pieces back and front um, bagged out and then uh, um, embroidered so <laughs> mm, that's not going to be great to follow but this is what I got. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, w I will do a video. Let, let me know in the comments if that's something that you're interested in. I used some embroidery floss to lace that at the front. I, I love how this looks. It, uh, it's got a bit of a German fairy tale vibe to me, actually. And I guess the cottage core aesthetic is not that dissimilar from that. I At first I was thinking about giving her a waistcoat and I even thought about felt for the stays but it just looked so bad. In the end I used this um, flannel and I think it was the right choice. It is kind of bulky, like obviously stays are meant to kind of hold you in and, and the conception is that it would make you slimmer but I don't know, I think it's pretty like this. I didn't get footage of, I did get footage, I lost it, um, part of the issue I'm having with the camera. I have to remember to change the battery otherwise it doesn't save it if the battery dies. I didn't have footage of putting the flowers and the mushrooms in her hair I just used um, some hot glue and put those in uh, among the these like twists I did they're in theory a, a French braid but um, not what what I don't even know how to explain that anyway it's just twists away from her face um, to kind of hold the hair back um, off her forehead and then keep it away from the um the horns i really struggled getting her head back on her her head went too squishy um i had flashbacks to my dorothy doll where i cracked the fo face up i was so worried i was going to crack the face up um if anybody has tips for ever after high heads please let me know i i would way rather not work with them attached to the body i find that quite awkward um but the this um oh anxiety getting that head back on half on flipping neck the the head when i finally got it on it's a bit bobbly i don't know if that's because of the weight of the horns um but it ends up giving her this like kind of coy expression like automatically I was trying to glue her ears on with hot glue and it was just not having it so I've ordered some uh, two-part epoxy I just don't have any in my stash right now and then I'll try that I think I got two different types actually and um, people think that uh, two-part epoxy glue is all one type it is not there are various types for various different applications so be careful read the description I added a little bit of water to her hair th these front bits just to kind of make them lay flat they're 
kind of hiding um, a little bit of the, the transition between her ear and her face. And then we went and took photos. I'm really lucky that I have a, a lush green garden because it was a, a good setting. My asthma has been really bad and I've not been very mobile. I actually got um, class of disabled. <laughs> mm, um, I'm feeling quite a lot of ways about that. I f I'm feeling pretty bad and it's, it's making me pretty sad actually. Um, but yeah, we popped into the garden. I caught the light um, early afternoon, which is apparently supposed to be uh, like the best time for photos and just before it rains and I think she looks really pretty so let me know what you think um thanks for watching thanks as always to my patreon special shout out to Camilla if you want to support me on patreon links in the description box below like share subscribe do all the wonderful youtube things I appreciate you thank you so much for watching and don't forget to check out insta for the giveaway I will see you in the next one a little bit of asmr -y, windy blowing um fawn in a second. I hope you like it.